Amarillo has always been a railroad town. During her service life, Locomotive 5000 traveled by this depot countless times. After her retirement in November 1953, she was donated to the city of Amarillo and placed on static display in front of the Santa Fe Depot in the spring of 1957. The Railroad Artifact Preservation Society was formed in 2003 for the express purpose of preserving 5000, which is affectionately known as the Madam Queen. This would require constructing a new building specifically designed to display the Madam Queen. A building large enough to house the Madam Queen could not be constructed at the depot site due to property restrictions. A new site would have to be found close to the depot due to the extreme cost of relocating her. The Society began to work with the City of Amarillo to locate possible sites that would meet her needs. This location at Southeast 2nd and Lincoln, immediately north of the Amarillo Civic Center, was chosen. It would provide good viewing and would be close to the action at the Civic Center. It was also only four blocks from the depot. The yard tracks behind this site were originally built by the Fort Worth and Denver Railroad in 1897. The Fort Worth and Denver was the first railroad into the area that is now called Amarillo. When the Santa Fe Railway came in about a year later, Amarillo was born. Many local businesses and individuals have contributed to the effort to relocate Madam Queen. Here the lot is being prepared and leveled off in preparation for the concrete slab which will be poured to support Madam Queen's massive weight. She tips the scales at an incredible 890,000 pounds. On this day, the first scoop of dirt is removed in order to build the concrete slab. Sam and David inspect the new concrete slab. The electrical conduit will be used to power the lights on the locomotive. Built in 1930, Madam Queen is the culmination of decades of research and development by the Santa Fe Railway Mechanical Engineering Department. Testing in 1931 proved that she was far superior to the 210-2-3800 class she was designed to replace. Locomotive 5000 was designed and built for moving fast freights on the Pecos Division between Belen and Clovis, New Mexico. Before 5,000 could be moved, she had to be properly lubricated and prepared. 
Red survey ribbon was used to mark lubrication locations to ensure that none would be overlooked. Rapp's volunteers cleaned up the 5000 and did some touch-up of her paint. This would help maintain the engine until a more thorough restoration could be done after the relocation. At first, an automotive grease gun was used to insert grease into the alamite fittings. Later, a pneumatic grease gun was found to be more effective. The packing ring around the piston rod was removed to prevent scoring. After the relocation, the parts were reinstalled. The locomotive and tender connected together were too long to be pivoted. Several steps were required to separate them. First, the radial buffer spring tension had to be released. The spring was compressed by inserting an all-thread rod with nuts and washers on both sides. The nuts were tightened, which compressed the spring tension, releasing the pressure. Second, all of the steam, air, water, and oil lines between the locomotive and tender had to be disconnected. All of this work was done by society volunteers. Finally, the drawbar pins had to be removed. On Madame Queen, there are two drawbars. Society members were able to remove the lower drawbar pin, but the top one wouldn't budge. It was decided to wait until the relocation contractor arrived with his heavy machines and more help to try another attempt. The security fence that has been around Madam Queen for decades was removed by city crews just a few days before the relocation. Early in the morning on day one, society volunteers begin to gather around the Madam Queen to start the project. The society worked with many city officials to ensure that the relocation went smoothly. After two and a half years of planning, the big day finally arrives.
History Channel director Kevin Barry discusses today's filming with RAPS President Sam Teague. Society volunteers and Messer's crew try one last attempt at removing the upper drawbar pin. Nothing works. The drawbar will have to be cut, but this will wait until the engine is moved across the depot access road and stops in the parking lot. Workers remove the knuckle from the front coupler so that a special key can be inserted. This will allow the connection of the winch cables which will pull the locomotive. Pre-assembled track panels were trucked in for the Madam Queen. Sand ramps were built to keep the track level across the street curbing. The side booms are capable of lifting 200,000 pounds each. If necessary, one can be placed at each corner of the locomotive and lift the engine off of the ground. Messer prefers to keep the locomotive on the track as it is much safer for the equipment and the workers. The lifting of the engine will be done only if absolutely necessary. The last of the welds are removed that are holding Madam Queen in place. All during the relocation work, society members and relocation workers were interviewed for the Mega Movers episode.
This tree had to be removed later because it was preventing the track from going straight enough. A 210 4 like the Madam Queen can't negotiate tight curves. This front loader is pulling out the one inch diameter winch cable from the rear of the side boom that will be used to pull the Madam Queen down the track. This chain was placed here years ago. When it was removed, this spike was found tack welded to the track.
Madam Queen begins to row for the first time in almost 50 years. The second set of driving wheels begins to derail and the locomotive is stopped. The problem was corrected and the locomotive continued down the track without incident. Nobody wanted to do it, but there was no other choice but to cut this top draw bar in order to separate the tender from the locomotive. At this point, the locomotive and tender have been separated and the tender will be pivoted in order to get her out the gate. The heavy weight of the tender causes her to dig into the soft ground. Something else will have to be done in order to turn the engine. Sand is put down on city streets to help the units pivot. Daniel's plywood trick worked and prevented the wood ties under 5,000 from digging into the ground the way they had under the tender. The tremendous weight and twisting action destroyed the plywood as you can see here. On the way towards the gate, 5,000 was stopped due to this low spot. The engine was pulled forward so that filled dirt could be added to lift the track up. Then 5,000 continued towards the gate and out onto the street in front of the depot property.
Third Street is an important thoroughfare for emergency vehicles. It can't be closed very long. The crew must work as quickly as possible to get the street open again. Whenever the tender or locomotive is moved, there is always two machines working in unison, one at the front and one at the rear. This keeps them from getting out of control.
The only 90 degree pivot point on the route is at the intersection of Southeast 2nd and Grant. In the distance, Madam Queen's Tender EX-111 is ready to start down southeast 2nd towards the new site, while Daniel lines up the track for the Madam Queen to follow down Grant. Now Madam Queen takes her turn getting across 3rd Street. Tender EX-111 carries two tanks. One tank is for the water, which holds 20,000 gallons. The other is for fuel oil, which carries 7,100 gallons. Finally, the units are crossed 3rd Street and the track panels are picked up and taken to a new location. Sam T explains on the Mega Movers camera the sequence of events. His collar is turned up due to a severe sunburn he received on the first day of the relocation. The temperatures were in the high 90s. Side booms and front loader work in unison together to pivot the Madam Queen at the 90 degree intersection at Southeast 2nd and Grant.
The locomotive is much heavier than the tender, and this was a tense moment. Five thousand is only one block from her new home, but many hours of work are still left before she is in position at the new site. Storm clouds begin to gather, threatening heavy rains. Rain now would be very unfortunate and could threaten the completion of the relocation.
Tinder EX111 pivots about 45 degrees to line up with the concrete foundation.
Plywood sheets were laid down on the ground in a laced pattern to help the track ties to float over the edge of the concrete foundation. If the ties snagged on the edge of the concrete, the locomotive might turn over. Sam and Kathy Teague take the final ride on 5000 to their new home. What do you think, Sam? Yeah, awesome. <laughs> the Madam Queen gets the last pivot into display position. The day is coming to an end as the sun will soon be setting. The engine must be on the slab before the rain start. Daniel King gives his final approval. The track under EX-111 must be pushed towards the locomotive. Then the locomotive will be rolled backward to meet up so that the drawbars can be connected.
slab exactly right or is it, how far oversized is it? It's about nine feet over. Okay, so we've got about four that end. You're gonna... If I've measured the engine right, it's about nine feet. So you've got about three or four that end. It's gonna be quite a bit that end. Addition to this little group. <laughs> hey, this sort of stuff I'm okay with. Mm. You want me to get underneath the engine and clean the grease off? I might object to that. Right after the drawbars are connected, the heavy rains start. The relocation was completed in the nick of time. 